welcome to the Huddle Online as we look forward to Celtic hopefully lifting another piece of silverware this season. I'm joined in the studio by this famous old trophy, the Glasgow Cup, one of the oldest trophies in Scottish football. Celtic are the holders, we've won it for the last three years in a row and we're going for four in a row at Firhill against Rangers. I'm delighted to be joined in the Celtic TV studio by the manager of the under-17s, Michael Halloran. How are you doing, Michael? And the captain of the under-17s, Robbie Dees. Robbie, welcome to Celtic TV. Now, it's a, it is a wonderful trophy, Michael. We've won it for the last three years, but it's so important, as always, for Celtic to keep winning and to retain this trophy. That's obviously synonymous, synonymous with the club. No matter what age group you play at, you're expected to win. Silverware is a kind of icing on the cake, uh, if you want. Um, but yeah, it's important that we have we instill that winning um, style um, and that habit within the boys. However, you know, it's still a lot about development as well. Uh, but it'll be nice to lift the silverware if, if possible. Michael, obviously development is so important at this age group, but also important as part of development to be lifting silverware and the chance to play on, on the big stage in, in front of, of a decent crowd and see those green and white ribbons on the yeah, trophy. Absolutely. Um, again, you're saying you know, it's part of the, the, the players' progress, getting used to playing in the stadium, getting used to playing in front of a crowd. It's a pity it's a, it'll be a closed door, but there'll be a big enough crowd there for the boys to go out and perform in front of. And again, that brings a wee bit of added pressure to them. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's about learning to adapt and play under that pressure um, because when they come out to hopefully play at Celtic Park one day and there's 60,000 there in front of them, then they need to be used to that. And again, the pressure's on them to do well in that situation. But Robbie, you're obviously the captain of the team this year. You've got previous experience, obviously, played in the final last year. Will that help you as well get into this game? Yeah, totally. Just uh, many players of the team that in the 17s this season played in the final last year, so we've all had a little taste of winning. So we're all eager to win again, most definitely. Does it add any pressure or does it just add to the whole excitement of the game, the fact that you're going to be leading the team out? Obviously there's pressure, but every game Celtic put pressure on you, that's the whole deal of playing for Celtic. It's pressure all, all the time, so we're ready for it, definitely. And, and I mentioned obviously that we've, we've had three in a row, three consecutive victories over Rangers. We haven't conceded a goal in any of the finals, so even though the personnel might change, there must be confidence in, in the team. Almost well, definitely there's confidence. We all believe in each other well, know each other's strengths, we've played well all season, so we're going in confident. Michael Rock, Robbie just mentioned there, obviously he's one of the players that's played in previous finals. You've got another four or five in the squad. Will that help as well for particularly some of the younger guys? This is their first taste of a final like this? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, the, the the squad itself possesses a number of internationals in there, so they have that experience as well. You know, the international players have recently qualified for the European Championships at under-17 level. So that aligned to the fact that they've already played in finals, they've got that winning feeling, uh, that, that just augurs well for us. And, and you know, with the experience going in there and the confidence, and that should help them. That should help them. That's not to take away from the fact that it's a big game uh, and the opposition will be up, well up for it as well. So they need to just draw on that experience that they have and that wee bit of confidence and hopefully that will see them through at the end. And obviously some of your guys have already had development squad experience. Jack Aitchison has even been in the first team. So again, They'll, they'll look at this tournament as, as great experience, also to show the manager, for example, what they're capable of. Yeah. Now, of course, the same, we talk about development again, it's about getting these boys on as far as we can and pushing them on as often as we can. If the opportunity arises at the development squad, then hopefully they can go and take that opportunity and make it count. Uh, at the same time, with a few of the boys have been up and trained with the first team, which is, it was a, a huge bonus for them. Um, but saying, you know, if they just get that wee opportunity to, to go and keep progressing, uh, and keep doing well, then hopefully one day you know we'll see them out in the first team pitch, um, because ultimately that's that's what it's, what it's all about for us. Obviously, that's your ultimate ambition. You want to be playing for the Celtic first team. And when I look through the three previous finals, you've had the likes of Kieran Tierney, Jamie McCart, Calvin Miller, Jack Aitchison. They've all had first team experience, as Michael said. Some of the boys train them the first team. Ultimately, that's that's what you want to be doing as well. Yeah, obviously, we all aspire to be in the first team, so we just want to do our best, show the manager just show her what we're worth, our talent, so, yeah. Does it help, you know, when you see guys that maybe just a year or two ago were playing at your level, or sometimes you maybe have trained or played alongside them, mm -hmm. suddenly they, they've made that step up, does that give you encouragement? Yeah, it just shows that we're not far away, that just the work ethic, we just need to keep it up and you can easily get there. You know, obviously this season, it's a kind of round-robin tournament, we've got to the final, tough games against Rangers in, in terms of the competition and qualifying, but confidence going into this game? Yeah, obviously Rangers are a strong side our age, but we're going in confident. We've played them a few times this season, we know what they're like, so we'll be prepared for them, definitely. And is there any added responsibility over the next week as, as captain? 
in, in terms of the, the boys, obviously you'll be thinking about the game and talking about the game. Yeah. Were you kind of maybe be having a word with some of the younger guys? Or? Uh, yeah, obviously, but I think they all, everyone knows what we're up against and they're all eager and confident, but obviously I'll need to speak to someone, but I'm feeling confident with everyone. And Michael, obviously, as a manager, that will be one of the key roles for you is just preparing the boys, but obviously making sure that the, there's not the nervousness, there's that kind of excitement and anticipation. That, that responsibility falls on all the staff. It's up to us to keep them eager, at the same time try and keep them calm so they don't get too um, carried away and, and the nerves then start to bite. Naturally, there'll be some nerves, you know, because that's that's what you get when you go into any big game, any, any game you know at all, in my experience. And sometimes the, the nerves help you a wee bit. But the quicker they go on the pitch, get their nerves settled, then they'll be absolutely fine. But see, off the pitch, it's up to us just to keep them, you know, keep them finely tuned and make sure that, that, that they don't just lose focus and, and sight of what, what their, their, their goal is. Well, it's certainly a game that we're all looking forward to. It's going to be live on Celtic TV, so make sure you tune in and don't miss that. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that there has been a change on the seats opposite. Uh, Robbie has left the studio and I'm now delighted to be joined by head coach and under-17s, John McLaughlin. John, thanks for joining us. We're talking to, to Michael and Robbie, obviously the importance of this game, part of it is development, but the development of Celtic players is getting in that winning habit, so it's so important the boys go out there and perform to the best of their ability. 100%. It's When you see the players for Celtic, this is the types of game you see them in, uh, progressing, flourishing. Uh, they've worked hard in terms of to get to the final, uh, some difficult games, but more importantly now there's a trophy at stake and this is when you're looking for the real quality uh, and all the kind of development that they've learned throughout the season to come to fruition and hopefully if they do that then hopefully they can win this trophy. I suppose as coaches as well as, as the ability, it's, it's how the players perform, how their temperament is in these big, big occasions, that's what you're judging them on as well, isn't it? Most certainly. Uh, each day we, we put demands on them in the training and this game's no different. Uh, they'll be set up in a certain way, they need to know their roles and responsibilities uh, and they can't switch off for a second. A very, very important game uh, and is the biggest derby in the world uh, in football and at youth level, there's been some great finals recently, and I know for a fact that Rangers, you know, they'll be hurting for last year, so it'll be a very, very difficult game for the players. And Michael, obviously, we would heard from Robbie, and the players will be looking forward to this game, and again, the, the kind of pathway into that first team, and we see some of the academy boys, Kieran Tierney, James Forrest, Callum McGregor, Liam Henderson, it does give the boys an incentive and, and shows that, if, that, that they are being watched all the time. Mm -hmm. I think we're very fortunate that we have a manager who, has, who buys into the youth academy in a big way. He's very pro-youth, wants to promote within, wants to promote the young players. And that's really important that we've got that from the manager. So he's encouraged the lads at every opportunity. He's been out and he spoke to them a few times in the training pitch. Um, and I recall, him, I recall him coming down to speak, to speak to them just at the end of last season in the indoor hall at Lennox Town. They're doing their, their testing. And he said, I don't look at you as, as 16 and 17 year olds, I look at you as possible first team players. And that's a massive incentive for the boys. And they say, when you have a manager like that who wants to promote and push, and, and it's, it makes her job a lot easier and, and it's, it, it makes it a lot more exciting as well. I suppose, John, as well, you know, Michael had mentioned that some of the boys are even, even if they haven't played for the first team yet, they're getting the chance to train, which is a big step up. But again, when the rest of the squad are seeing that, then that, that can only make them want to work harder and, and try harder to get there themselves. That's correct. Each day, uh, some of them you know, watch the first team training, some of them watch the development players training. They see the difference moving from the 17s up into development and then from the development into the first team level. There's a massive difference. There's a massive, uh, you know, a lot of work placed on them in terms of you know, closing down, pressing the game. So they've, they've got to get a fitness level that's got to make them play really well at development level, but also then take it another step further and keep listening and learning and learn to listen. And when they do that, you know, when they're, when they're called upon, they've got to be ready. And that is our job, myself and Michael, to make sure that we, we implement these demands all the time from the first team to the development team into the 17s. And then that pathway's continued smoothly. And then hopefully they can go out in that park and, and, and progress and, and do well for Celtic's first team. And I'm guessing you guys obviously have a set plan that you'll put in place in the lead up to a big game like this so that and the hope is that come that kick off the boys are just ready and right out the traps from the first whistle. We've already had a couple of planning meetings um, and we've one scheduled for this afternoon with the head of youth Chris McCart 
So myself and John, and the sports science are involved in that also, medical side of it. Um, so we'll try to leave no stone unturned, um, but we'll certainly continue to meet and we'll go through analysis, etc. And we'll look at the, you know, the, the coaching ethos between now and, and the end of, um, you know, come kick-off time. I suppose, obviously, the ultimate aim is at the end of that, that final whistle, it's, it's four in a row and, and those green and white ribbons stay on this wonderful old trophy. That's, that's the aim and uh, it'll take hard work, and it'll take a lot of effort and, it, and it'll take a real composure to put your foot in the ball and play and pass because Rangers will, will be really up for the game uh, like we were last year. If we do the correct things and we're set up uh, the way we've been doing all season uh, and play our own style and listen to what the instructions are and the players adhere to that, then hopefully the green and white ribbons will come back along with the cup. Well, certainly, fingers crossed. Good luck, guys, and thanks for joining us on, on Celtic TV. And remember the game, whole game live, it's 7 o'clock kickoff at Fir Hill. You'll be able to join me. I'll be giving the commentary from that game. I say fingers crossed. It's a wonderful old trophy and its rightful place is here at Celtic Park. So we wish the guys the very best of luck and hope you can join us for Celtic versus Rangers, the City of Glasgow Cup final at Fir Hill live on Celtic TV. Hail, hail. <laughs>